let's go back to the Ten Commandments. All right, I'm going to read the Ten. I'm, I'm just going to read the, a couple of verses from Exodus 20. I'm going to start at verse three. This is the beginning of the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourselves an idol or any likeness of what is in heaven above or on earth beneath or in the water under the earth. You shall not worship them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. You get that? Yes. I don't want to hope That's I can fly by. Clear. Okay. It's very clear. How about, is this clear? It covers about everything. You shall not make for yourself an idol or any likeness of what's in heaven above, on the earth beneath, or in the water. Okay? Right. Now I want you to know. What else is there? Well, <laughs> that's the point. You're not supposed to make any, any likeness of those. We have basically 90 years of history in the New Testament. All right? Roughly. Throughout the New Testament, there is no mention of statues or other forms of images, yeah. either of Jesus or the apostles or Mary, the mother of Jesus. None in Scripture. Okay? Mm -hmm. But there is a simple warning that spoke, God spoke through John, the apostle, in 1 John 5, 21, when he says, little children, guard yourselves from idols. Mm -hmm. All right? Yet still... In the time of Isaiah, let me go back to the time of Isaiah. Would the Lord not have to say to those who are called by his name today like he did back then? And I'm going to read from Isaiah chapter 2. I'm going to read verses 5, 6, and 8, right? Okay. God spoke to Isaiah and said, Come, house of Jacob, and let us walk in the light of the Lord. For thou hast abandoned thy people, the house of Jacob, because they are filled with influences from the east. And he goes down and says, And their land has also been filled with idols. They worship the work of their hands, that which their fingers have made. Talking about the people of God. Yes. Where did this come from? Influences from the east. Yes. Greece, Rome. Well, to the east? No, no. That's going to the west. You know what's to the east? Okay. Babylon. Babylon, Babylon. Persia. Those were the lands to the east. They still are. Yes. So those influences, the word of God is saying those influences of, of making idols came from the east. All right? One of the great influences of the east was what's called iconography. 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 <laughs> that's, that's statues. Paintings, relics, those are all things common to the pagan religions. Right? What are they? They are all images of things either in heaven, on the earth, or under the earth. Things right? we should not be worshipping. Look at Paul in Athens. In, you know, in the book of Acts, Paul talks about how his spirit was provoked as he walked through Athens, that third kingdom in that statue of Nebuchadnezzar. Why? Because of the idols that he yes. saw everywhere, yes. right? Icons. icons. Icons are, like I said, they're the, they're the statues, the paintings, the, the relics. Okay, they're the things that people want to see in cuts. Objects right? of worship. They are the things made by the hands of man, right? Mm -hmm. But they, so now, you don't have to be a, a theologian or a brilliant scholar or have been saved for a thousand years to recognize the fact that they permeate much of what's called Christianity today. Yes, they do. But that didn't gain widespread acceptance in the church until the time of the Emperor Constantine. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and I have been saying all through this, this program that, that is one of the greatest turning points in Christianity. Now, obviously, there, you know, there are things that lead up to it, but all of a sudden, in the time of Constantine, who I believe is a, the true founder of the Holy Roman Empire, mm -hmm. right, which is different than... The Roman Empire, and different what most people think of the Holy Roman Empire in the Middle Ages, all right? It, it started in the time of Constantine, and it exists, exists today. And I don't know if you, how much of this history you know, but his mother, Helen, who went to Jerusalem, she seems to me to be the mother of relics, Yes. okay? Coming back with a piece, piece of the of true it. cross. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But that was never without controversy, all right? 
even back in the, in the early 700s, uh, Leo III was the emperor of the empire. And he was basically the Byzantine Empire, right? Which was the Roman Empire. And he had proclamations and edicts against icons, mm. wanted them all destroyed. Okay. Because, well, I can't say what was in his mind, but he wanted all of this because by that time, remember, I'm talking about in the year like in the early 700s, all the statues, the paintings, these, these relics had become commonplace in Christianity. And didn't God command all the people whenever they went into a, a land and conquered it that they were just destroy, destroy them everything? Yes. Everything. But now they're building yeah. the work of their fingers. But that's think about what he said to Isaiah, right? Yeah. So Leo was in. Uh, he was born in six eighty five and died in seven forty one, and he made a ruling that all of these icons throughout the church be destroyed. Well, that didn't go very far because the Pope came out and stood against that and wound up displacing him, actually, right? And then later on in the Protestant Reformation, you know, one of the early leaders, you had Martin Luther, who basically God used to start the Protestant Reformation, but right immediately following that, immediately, was John Calvin, right? John Calvin uh, lived from 1509 to 1564, and he was one of the prime moving forces in early Protestant uh, Development, right? Like Calvinism? Yes, Calvinism. But he, he affects more than just, it is Calvinism, and you know, it, it affects a lot of Christianity today. But he absolutely stood in opposition to icons. Again, against statues, artwork, and relics. Mm -hmm. Now, that was not an attitude that was shared by Martin Luther, uh, who remained a bit more attached to his Catholic roots. Well, that's just the truth. Uh cry unto thee, yes you are, hear my plea, for I've walked on my own, I force you to leave, my heart was like stone, I would not believe, but now I'm alone, I just want to receive. Bye.